Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna start with a chapter named infectious disease and we'll divide this chapter into three parts. One is viral infections, bacterial infections and protozoal infections. So we'll start with the viral infections. The first viral disease that we are gonna learn is measles. So let's get straight into it. Measles is caused by the agent named RNA paramyxovirus and it spreads by the respiratory droplets. Measles is one of the most contagious infectious diseases and remains a leading cause of death, especially among young children and especially in areas with low rates of vaccination. Measles is also called rubiola which can easily get confused with German measles, which is also called rubella. Similar sounding names, but very different viruses. Now the clinical features of measles, but before going there, let me clear the concept of certain terms that we are going to use. Number one, exanthem. Number two, ananthem. Number three, prodromal illness. And number four, incubation period. Exanthem refers to a wide spread rash outside of the mucous membrane. You can see the picture below. Ananthem refers to rash on mucous membrane. You can see coplic spots as ananthem in case of measles. Now the prodromal illness refers to early signs and symptoms of an illness that appears before the major signs and symptoms. Like in measles, the prodromal signs and symptoms are high grade fever, coplic spots, that's the ananthem, you can see the picture, and then three C's like conjunctivitis, cough, and coryza, which is the runny nose. Now let's talk about the incubation period. It is time between the contact with infectious agent and onset of signs and symptoms. The incubation period of measles is approximately 6 to 19 days. That means the time between the contact with measles virus and onset of signs and symptoms is 6 to 19 days. Now let's understand the clinical features of measles in this figure. Incubation period takes 6 to 19 days. Prodromal period takes 3 days. Exanthem takes 4 days. And then finally, recovery period takes 10 to 14 days. Now, here the measles virus enters the body. And then here, septums of the measles stop. This is the prodromal period and it comprises of ananthem, the complex spot, high grade fever, and then three C's that we have already discussed and they are cough, conjunctivitis, and coryza, which is the runny nose. Now that is exanthem, which is rash outside of the mucous membrane and you can see the macular paper rash in measles like this. And then ultimately, the recovery period. Alright, let's write clinical features of measles in a proper way. It is divided into, number one, prodromal illness. The prodromal illness comprises of high-grade fever, ananthem, cough, conjunctivitis, and coryza. Number two, major sign and septum of measles, and that is exanthem, the maculopapular rash. Now let's talk about the complications of measles. Measles can affect lungs, intestine, and brain. In lungs, it can cause pneumonia. In intestine, it can cause diarrhea, while in brain, it can cause encephalitis. 
measles also suppresses the immune system for up to six weeks which leads to bacterial superinfection which can lead to otitis media let's write the complications of measles in a proper way number one otitis media it is the most common complication of measles number two pneumonia number three diarrhea number four encephalitis the last three complications here are the major causes of death in measles now how to diagnose measles usually measles is diagnosed clinically however it can also be done through serology simply look for measles antibodies now how to prevent measles measles vaccine is used it is a live attenuated virus vaccine it is given at 12 to 15 months of age and again at 4 to 6 years of age now the treatment of measles there is no specific antiviral treatment but medication like antibiotics is used to treat super infections maintain hydration and pain relief Vitamin A can also be prescribed for young children and severely malnourished. Vitamin A boosts antibody response 